YouTube, this is Charlie 426 and today we have the review of the Premium Bandai Exclusive or P Bandai Exclusive HG Zaku Desert Type. So this one is from the Gundam The Origins, not the not your typical not it's not the typical HGUC style uh, Zaku, so you can definitely tell the some design aspects or proportions may seem different than those who, what you know. Now this kid was definitely a big surprise for me because um before this kit was announced, the only Zaku Desert type we had as a product was the Robot Dawashi Ver Anime, and, and there were two versions of that. So with that in mind, I saw we would never actually see a Zaku Desert type kit, but this it was later announced, so this was definitely a big surprise, and decided to get it. And as you can see, it's definitely has it definitely has one of the more unique, uh, how should I say, the color combination. We have a color of sand brown, black, green, red. So definitely a uncommon color scheme. And at the back there's the Zaku half cannon type just to give you an idea on how diff different the color is because uh, at first I thought that was more of a sand, a desert color type but my, now looking at this there's definitely a big difference. So before we go on let's go over some parts. So first of all let's go over components so obviously you get the mobile suit itself so you get the Zaku desert type and the hand wise I, I, gave, I gave it the, the multi-purpose hands for left and right. And here's what you're supposed to be getting and using, uh, partially actually. So, uh, once again, we get the basic uh, uh, heat hawk. So we get the folded version, slash to be stored onto the side skirt. Second is the one that you actually use on the hand. But once again, we've seen these multiple times, so I'm not going to be demonstrating them at, at all. Uh, Hand-wise, we get a fully open hand for the left arm. And then we get a trigger finger with the right hand. And I already attached the machine gun just for the saving time. And we get a machine gun, a one of the more unique design ones as well. So yeah, this is not your typical or common Zaku machine gun, which which I do like because it's much more shorter and compact as well. And then here we have some like sub weapons or kind of more like option parts for the side skirt. So here we have two of these cases. What you can do is that, is that you can attach these onto the side skirts and then you can open them up to reveal the heat the crackers. For those who don't know what crackers are, they're basically uh, uh, grenades for Zakus. So you, you can see two of them. So if you want to have four, you can attach both on each side as well. Uh, just keep in mind, while you do see two, these are molded together. So yeah, you can't take them out individually. And then either that we use this. This is like a small grenade launcher part. So you can attach it onto the side skirt as well. And then on the back we have this rotating part. It doesn't really rotate that smoothly, but yeah, you can attach this to the side skirt and then you know use this as a sub weapon. Once again, I'll de demonstrate this later. And then we it, we get a sticker decal sheet. Once again, nothing too special. We get the, all these marking symbols, lines. The only one I use so far is the mono line only. And even for the mono line, we have two options. But I went with I went with the traditional pink one. All right, so being a premium Bandai kit, there this one also has some leftover parts, not too many because yeah. So number one, we get your typical leftover poly caps, nothing too special. Uh, here we have, I believe we have a repeat plate. Uh, this is the D1, and yeah, we get a D1 and a D2. So looking at D1, what leftovers we get is, I believe this one's supposed to be action based connector. We get a neck joint. We get a, uh, I believe this is supposed to go onto the body part or something else, I can't remember. Uh, here we have some leg inner frame parts for the, for the no more normal Zakus out there. So this would also apply to the same uh, D2 plate as well. I accidentally cut one from the D1 because there's actually a very similar part looking to this and I wasn't really paying attention, so yeah. And then on the F plate we get the, uh, the neck cover joint area and then we get some thruster parts, whoops. This one does not use any thrusters, by the way. And this one is also a leftover piece because due to the, how should I say, this is supposed to go onto the arm, but uh, because of a certain connection, we, you don't actually use this part as well, so yeah. All right, so let's get on to the review. So before we go over articulation, as I mentioned, let's use the Zaku half hand type. For now, I took off all the weapons just for, for the sake of like convenience. So you can see, we, get, we can see some parts where you, pretty much shared let's, let's such as the inner frame joints of course the leg joints are kind of different you can see the leg design uh, the knee section parts are very different as well for the design the 
the lower legs part seems to be the, exactly the same or at least the front part but the side parts as well seems to be having a different mold going on there so you can see there's a different design now if you look at the back obviously the joints are different and then we have these extra details going on so yeah and then by looking up the front skirt and the front skirt seems to have a different design same goes for the side skirts as well uh, the shoulder spikes are also different design. This one's more squarish, uh, not the spikes. I mean the overall armor design. And the head also has a kind of a different look into it because the head actually has Vulcans on it, and then obviously the the ant commander antenna is also a different design. It has red piping only on the head, and then on the body we have the more sand desert color. So definitely an odd choice, but it works. And. Uh, looking at the backpack, one thing of course, they both have different backpacks. A, a typical Zaku would have a, a, a backpack that has two thrusters on it, I believe. But uh, Now this one, while it does have a thruster looking thing, it definitely has a more a radiator look onto it. So it, which, is definitely, which is really a unique design concept. Alright, so other than that, let's go over articulation. So, let's get the head. The head, uh, the, what I really like about certain uh, Zaku kits is that uh, some of the origin Zaku kits, they would just give a single black piece without any molds on on the piece, and then you have to just randomly uh, apply the sticker on the middle. This one actually had a mono eye molded onto the piece, which was very easy for me to apply the sticker. And then this also has one of those uh, Master Grade Zaku 2.0 gimmicks where if you move the head, the mono eye moves together gimmick. I believe this is not the first time we're seeing this. I believe some other Origins uh, Zaku kits or Xeon kits have, have this function. It's just that not every mono eye kit actually had this function. So that's that. Of course, because of this, I believe there's no up and down movement because, yeah, because of the structure of this. Uh, shoulder armor wise, we have your basic ball jointed arm connection so you can go forward and backward as well and then you can we also have the function where this also pops out a little bit so it give, gives you a little bit more range so be, although yeah depending on how you use it you can barely it doesn't really go 90 degrees because of one number one is because of the armor number two I could be doing something wrong but yeah mostly it's just the armor colliding so if it wasn't for the armor I think we can barely make it up to 90 degrees but yeah it's not the perfect 90 degrees of course um, as I mentioned, the backpack, we, there's nothing that does actually move on the backpack, so it's just two pieces snapped together, actually three pieces snapped together, and then we have these two small pieces like attached onto it. Uh, the arms, once again, on one being a Zaku, on one shoulder there's a shield, and the other shoulder has a spike. Now the sh shield version, there's not much movement than you think, so it's just connected to a, ball, a, a plastic ball joint, so yeah, and there's t there is technically a small joint there, but it doesn't really move that much up and down, but sidewise it moves quite a lot, so, yeah. And then the lower arm does actually, wait, go 360, of course, once again being on the stiff side, and then we have a nice double jointed bend going on here. Uh, and the other arm, there's no difference as well, but... Uh, on the left arm, we have this sub weapon, which is like once again kind of like a grenade slash missile launcher going on here. But of course, like in the arts, any art of the Zaku Desert type or even the promo picks, this thing also uh, suffers from the Alex syndrome. What, what the Alex syndrome is basically, if you look at any art style or of the Master Grade, uh, not the Master Grade, the Mobile Suit, the Gundam Alex, the arms are the we always see the Gatling guns are facing the side parts but in reality that that's actually t twisting the entire arm 90 degrees as well or 180 degrees depending on how on the mole suit and which means that then we can't really bend the arms like this because because obviously the bending point is on the other way so yeah this is also one of those tricky parts uh, but I would like to mention despite how this looks like this is just a plug plug-in gimmick so this thing does not actually have any articulation itself um, while you saw the launcher actually come out pretty easily, but the lower part doesn't really come off that easily. So you can see I had some struggle there, but it works. So this is where you actually put that left lower part onto the arm, so yeah. And it actually has a firm connection. Now the body, main body connection, I'm, I'm just going to show you guys this. Is a main ball joint connection. Nothing, nothing too special going on there, and... And once again, we have the 
the weird I'm not well not exactly weird but it's one of those parts where the side the there's a middle section on the body where you have to actually uh, you know attach to make it look le look less awkward going on here and then yeah despite the body and with despite the cables you can still go 360 because I believe some Zaku kits actually have th this main connection onto the on the lower section which does limit the movement uh, and then the front skirts also they're not your typical ball jointed ones so they actually do come in separated pieces and the side skirts also move on their own as well but despite being a polycap ball, ball joint they don't really move too well I mean every time I try to move them they usually pop out and then here we have those holes to attach those extra option weapon parts or sub weapons uh, so yeah so I believe the upcoming the new upcoming HUC Sharzaku revive has actually fixed this issue so although I'm not really sure if I'll be getting that kit but I, I'm just kind of curious how the structure is and the legs are your typical Zaku uh, articulations. We have the side swivel going on here. We have the hint, this system going on. And then go 90 degrees up front. Back, not so much because the back skirt does not move. The back skirt is pretty much the same design, but we have this extra gray mold going on here. Uh, and then we, despite the cables going on here, we still have a nice uh, double jointed bend going on. And you can see these joints definitely has that, uh, how should I say, this rubberish it's not actually rubber but it gives you that illusion of this this thing is like looks like rubber and we have your typical ball jointed feet alright so we've seen the basic articulation uh, as well so I'll be right back with the um, demonstration of the equipment because once again there are some parts that you need to know okay here we have the first demonstration so apparently this machine gun is also a 120 millimeter machine gun it has made this machine gun was actually specifically made for the Zaku desert type and then it ha basically compared to the regular machine gun it's much more shorter uh, I'm not sure about power wise but it, I would say the the design looks more efficient compared to the original design of course that would de depend on the person so currently you're doing the double hand pose is no problem because number one we obviously have a trigger finger number two we have a handle that moves forward and backward so has a lot of range of movement and the back stock isn't as long compared to the original so and you can even fold it up so it's much more easier to handle at least for me so apparently I, I made a mistake so this is a missile launcher and then the one I mentioned uh, previously the smaller option part this is a rocket launcher although sure I mean rockets and missiles I I would assume they're different weapons although I'm not really sure what would be the big different be, difference between the weapons so anybody who's like an expert regarding that do let me know so currently on the side skirts I have both of them holding the crack grenade so as I mentioned these are basically grenades and it's good to actually have them as well so once again I'll be right back with the demonstration for this part because yeah this one was kinda of tricky for me to use okay I'm back here's the last part of the review so currently I'm using the the rocket launcher the 2-2 rocket launcher so it's kinda of awkward to use because the overall how, the way how you aim is not exactly the ideal way so yeah, currently I'm trying to make it look forward, then I have to move the arm, and there's a lot of parts you need to move. But basically the way how this thing works is that other than actually getting the hand into the handle, which is an easy process because you just plug it in, the way how it works is that when you plug it out, it should be looking something like this with the full handle folded up. And the way how this works is that you attach this section to the uh, side skirt, and then when you move it, you move the, the launcher itself instead of the entire thing. So yeah, you store in, and this is how it looks like when it's stored, it looks pretty natural. But I'm pretty sure some of you guys are wondering, can I attach it to the other side so I can use it on the left arm? And the answer is yes. All you need to do is, number one, plug the front section out, flip it, and then re-plug. And there you go, you have the part, and all you need to do is just pretty much plug it in, and you're good to go. So yeah, it's one. It's actually a good thing to know or be aware that you can actually use this onto the other arm because not many weapons is actually is able to do that when you think about it. Of course, like repositioning is going to be tricky. Well, of course, this, despite having the, the the missile launcher onto the hand, I say it's still possible to hold it. It's just that you just need to work your way through and you're good to go. And that's pretty much it for the review for the HG, the Premium Bond exclusive HG Zaku Desert type. So if you guys got 
any questions or request in your comment below. Uh, this kit is definitely fun. I mean, the build quality is definitely good. The color scheme is unique and it has a lot of unique design aspects, especially like the backpack and a very uncommon weapon for a Zaku to have a, um, a built-on weapon on the arm. Well, not exactly built-on, but you, you get my idea, like a sub-weapon on, on the arm itself. So if you're a big fan and if you're not, if you don't want to spend too much money on the Royal Downwatch version, this is definitely a good alternative. Anyway, thank you for watching the review. This was the review of the Premium Bondi exclusive HG Zaku Desert Tide. If you guys got any questions or requests, leave a comment below. I still have more stuff to buy and build and make reviews out, so please stay tuned. Until then, see you guys next time.